Hello, we're going to look at conditional probability in this lesson. So let's look at the Venn diagram we got on this page here. It shows a number of students in a class. You've got Italian in this circle, those who study Italian, and those who study French in this circle here. And obviously the eight in the middle are the students who study both Italian and French, and the one outside of those that study neither of these subjects. Now, conditional probability is when you know something has happened. So in this one, they're looking at... Suppose a student randomly selected from the class is found to study French. So we know they study French and we want to look at the probability of them studying Italian knowing that they've studied French. So if we know that they've studied French, we know that we're dealing with this area here. And we're dealing with only 15 students, the 8 plus the 7. So therefore, the number of Italian students that you can have out of the ones that study French is going to be 8 fifteenths and this is conditional probability so basically the probability that they study Italian given that they study French and we use a straight line to mean the word given okay and we can see that basically if you have probability of A given B then it's the number of elements in A intercept B which is this bit in the middle here divided by the number of elements in B which is all of these things in here now, given that we uh, probably just ratios, we could just write all of these as ratios. Okay, so we've got, what's that, 22, so there's 30 students altogether. We could do that as over 30, over 30, over 30, and over 30 for each of these and get new probabilities. And what you will notice that if you do 8 thirtieths and then divide it by 8 plus 7, which is 15 thirtieths, the 30th will cancel because we get 8 30th times by 30 over 15 and we're left with just 8 over 15. So this formula here works just as well if we replace the n's with p's and do probabilities of the intersection divided by the probability of the outcome that we know that's already occurred. So let's just recap conditional probability. This formula means the probability of A given that B has already happened. And it is equal to the probability that they both happen, i.e. the intersection, divided by the probability of B, the thing that's already happened. All right, let's look at some examples. So we want to find the probability of A given B if P intercept B is 1. So let's just draw our P, our A, and our B. Now we know the intersection is 0 0.1, and we know that the whole of probability of B is equal to 0 0.4. So therefore, this area, where it's just B and not including A, is 0.3. So we could just use our formula. P of A given B, we've got enough information, is equal to the intersection over the property of B. And that is just equal to 0.1 over 0.4, which equals a quarter, or 0.25. Now, I quite like drawing the Venn diagrams and realizing it from the Venn diagram. So we see the total area of B here is 0 0.4. The bit with the A in it is 0 0.1. You do 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.4. That's how it relates to the Venn diagram. Now, we know that P of A is equal to 0 0.3, so we can fill in that area. And we know that union is equal to 0 0.5. Right, well, this means actually things are going to change, actually. It's not the same information from the question. There's no way we could have a union 0 0.5 if um, this is only 0 0.1 in the middle. Okay, so what's going to happen here is we know that all of this area, the union, so the union is everything inside these two circles. So we know that the union is equal to 0 0.5. And we've got P of A and P of B. If we were just to add those, we would get 0 0.7. And there's no way that can be inside the union. So the overlap must be 0 0.2, the difference between these. So we put the overlap in first, 0 0.2. We know P of A is 0 0.3, so this area will be 0 0.1. We know P of B is 0 0.4, so this area will be 0 0.2, because these must add up to 0 0.4. And outside, we must have 0 0.5 if we're doing part B. Okay. So we're doing part B, this is the diagram we would have. So we know that the intersection is going to be 0 0.2, and we want to find the probability of A given B. So part B, P of A given B, will equal 0 0.2, the intersection, divided by the probability of B, which is 0 0.4, which equals a half. 
okay we can see these are actually equal so the probability of getting this given this has happened is going to be a half given a and b are mutually exclusive now if i do that i have a totally different diagram okay if they're mutually exclusive so let's just draw the diagram of what it would look like if they were exclusive if i grab this move up there grab this move it here uh, we need to rub this out so if they're mutually exclusive they do not overlap so it's impossible for a to happen when b happens okay so if b's already occurred a can't happen so p of a given b if they're mutually exclusive will be equal to zero right we're going to look at this question the probability is cloudy on a particular day is 0.4 the probability is cloudy and rainy on a particular day is 0.2. So we can put that in straight away. We know that um, probability is cloudy is 0.4, so this will be 0.2. Probability will be rainy on a day when it's cloudy. We do not need the rest of the information. We know that it's going to be cloudy. Okay, so we're just dealing with this. The probability that it is rainy given that it's cloudy is equal to the probability of the intersection rainy intersect cloudy over the probability of it being cloudy probability of rainy intersect cloudy is 0.2 probability of being cloudy is 0.4 gives us a half i'm drawing the venn diagrams because if you can quite often if you draw a venn diagram it can make these questions a lot easier um, you don't have to you can use the formula but i quite like drawing the venn diagrams as much as i can we don't have enough information to fill in the rest of the diagram, but it's not needed to do the question. Right, and our last question here. In a group of 50 students, 40 study mathematics, 32 study physics, and each of the study, students studies at least one of these subjects. So we know that 40 plus 32 is equal to 72, but there's only 50 students, and they all must study maths or physics. So therefore, the overlap must be 22. And so for the rest of the maths is in here is going to be 18 and the rest of the physics is going to be 10. So there we go, we've drawn a Venn diagram. So we found how many students study both subjects. We've done all of that. Okay. Oh, to so study both subjects. So part A, uh, 22 study both. Part B. If a student from this group is randomly selected, find the probability he or she studies maths but not physics. The studies mass but not physics is not conditional probability. So we've got studies mass um, but not physics. So we intersect that with not P. It's just going to be 18 out of 50. Part two studies physics given that he or she studies maths. Well, we know there are going to be 40 students that study maths. Okay, it's so all of that. And we know that 22 of them study physics. So it's 22 out of 40. There's 22 out of the whole thing, which is 40. We could cancel that down to 11 over 20 if we so wished. Okay, so there's a few examples of conditional probability. I hope that's made it a little bit easier for you. Um, do work through some more questions. I'll put some on the video just in case you're watching online for you to have a go at. If you've got the Hayes books, you can then go and look up the answers if you so wish. Feel free to pause the video and then have a go at the question and see if you can do it.